I'm especially pleased to follow this morning's presentation on national security strategies. And I enjoyed being part of a discussion group that analyzed uh, the role of national security strategies in actually providing peace and security for the countries. Dr. Malante has just given us a sense of the impact of making choices to spend resources of the government on the security sector. What he's made clear is that when you have spent your money, you've allocated it in one sector, you don't have the choice of spending it again in another sector. So the choices that you're making are very important and have significant consequences. Next slide, please. This slide will present an overview. It's a kind of a roadmap for our discussion. We begin with the national security strategy. Since the security sector budget should be designed in a way that it supplies the resources that are needed for the country to actually execute its national security strategy, to bring that vision of a strategy into a reality. We will then focus on reviewing the laws and the regulations that are necessary to have the security budget developed and executed in a way that's compatible with what the values of the country have dictated. So that the laws of the country, the regulations of the country, define the way in which you can and should develop the security strategy. And the principles of public sector resource management also play a very important role in how the budget is planned and executed. All of the rules and the principles work together to define the budget process that in the end will, we hope, show that we have made the right choices, we are providing security for the country. But all of this must be monitored. Now, some think of monitoring and evaluation as something that takes place at the end of a process. But in fact, I've put it underneath all of the other elements because I believe that monitoring and evaluation involves monitoring, are you following the rules? Monitoring, are you adhering to the principles? Monitoring, are you conducting your process in the way that your government has decided is appropriate to actually provide your country and the country's government with the resources that it needs? So monitoring is something that might be formally written up and evaluated uh, at the end and feed into the new year of the budget planning process. But in fact, someone should be looking all along the way. And those of you who are managers are responsible to see along the way that the rules and the principles are followed. Next slide, please. Now, m when most economists talk about budgets, uh, they talk about expenditures. Uh, I've always liked to talk about both revenues and expenditures. And so I put together this slide to remind us that there really are two important 
aspects of budgeting. So clearly, expenditures is very important. And we will examine all the steps in expenditure management. And those include planning, budgeting, procurement, and, and monitoring all those processes. But the, the chart on, on the left um, comes from Afrobarometer, which some of you may be familiar with it. It's actually a pan-African think tank. Afrobarometer has offices in several countries in Africa, and the Afrobarometer staff members develop questionnaires and go out and meet Africans face to face and ask them about very important issues. And they've been quite successful in getting candid responses to their questions. And so they went out and asked uh, a very simple question. Do you agree or disagree with the following statement? The government usually uses the tax revenues it collects for the well-being of citizens. So does the money go to benefit the Wanenshi, the people, as we'd say in East Africa? Or is it disappearing or misused in a way that the benefit doesn't get to the people? Now, when they asked that question, they then ranked the countries in Africa that they, that where they had responses. And the country where a large number of people thought that the government money was being spent for the people was Tanzania. And that actually reflects some very serious efforts that have been made in the last few years to improve budget management. So 76% of Tanzanians thought that that government money was being spent for the well-being of the people. And you see the top three countries, Tanzania, Burkina Faso, and, and Mauritius. But from there, a smaller and smaller percentage of people feel that money is being spent for them. And at the bottom of the list, with Zimbabwe, Swatini, and Morocco, only about 30% of the people feel that the government money is not being spent well. Now, there could be different reasons for this. It could be that the money is being spent well, but people don't know or they don't feel the impact of it. It's being spent in a way that, that really doesn't benefit them. And so, again, we go to the concept that Dr. Gary mentioned, allocative efficiency. How can government money be spent in a way that it gets the best outcome? And that is what we will be looking at today, and in particular, looking at the situation in the security sectors. Next slide, please. <coughs> the first paper that I read about security sector management was one that was written more than 20 years ago by Nicole Ball and, and Mel Malcolm Holmes. And that paper spent a lot of attention on the principles of public sector expenditure management. And it also made clear that the security sector would benefit from applying these principles in the same way that any other part of the government would benefit. I'm not going to go over all of these, but in your book, Securing Development, I believe you were given that book, you will see 
a chapter, chapter two, that goes over the principles and the whole budget process in detail. And for those of you who are particularly interested in this, um, I suggest that you turn to that when you, when you have a few minutes and consider um, how it might apply to what you're doing or what, what you're seeing around you. But there are four principles I'd like to mention today. One is comprehensiveness. And comprehensiveness means that the budget must cover all fiscal operations. There are many countries in the world, and in particular, there are some in Africa, where there are what's called off-budget activities that aren't included. And in the book, Securing Development, they describe a uh, situation where a country was allowing some of its military to provide services for diplomats and others and to earn money for being bodyguards for these individuals. And the money didn't go back into the budget. And so there may be a question as to where the money went and what it was useful, used for. So comprehensiveness means if there's an activity that relates to government personnel, if there's revenue that is earned by that personnel, it should go in that bucket, that single bucket. And discipline is what uh, Dr. Gary spoke about, our envelope. You, you can't spend what you don't have. Well, sometimes people do spend what they don't have, and that's called borrowing. Uh, and there are other implications because if you borrow, you're going to have to pay that back, which means you're going to have less to spend on other things. So discipline means observing the limits that are set out for you. Transparency is one that we hear about a lot. And there are even organizations like Transparency International that make transparency the focus of their attention. That means that you, the decision maker, should have all the information that you need to make your decisions, to make your choice. And when you make those decisions, everyone should know the decision was made and they should know you made it. And that relates back to accountability. We know that you made that decision. You are now responsible for that. And so that's why we're called servants, public servants. We make decisions, but we make those decisions to serve other people, and we are going to be held accountable for that. Next slide, please. Now, these principles actually shape a process. And the process itself becomes a way of building relationships, building trust, or not. In other words, if the process is transparent, if your ministry is supposed to give information to another ministry and does so on time fully each year, then you build relationships of trust among the different ministries. And you know that you can depend on each other. And so as you move through that planning process, you have a series of interactions that we hope reinforce good governance. If you look at that model of the budget cycle, you see that we've added a few words in red. 
And those words come from uh, a, a, an ACSS colleague, uh, Dr. Fairley Chapui. And Dr. Chapui was working on developing the national security strategies. And she said that we should remind ourselves that that strategy is kind of the hub, that everything that happens should be based on the national security strategy. And you put that in the middle, but then on the outside, you have the overall budget. And that's to remind us that the national security strategy should be integrated into the entire budget process. And one thing that's different about our national security strategy as compared to the data that Dr. Malante described is that a country may decide that it, its national security is not only to respond to risks of military violence. A country may decide that its major security risk relates to health or catastrophic storms or floods. The security strategy is from that broad perspective not only one that relates to the military. And therefore, when I speak of financing national security strategies, I may, in fact, be speaking about deploying resources from other sectors. And so it's important to remember that we don't have best practices in this area. What we have are sound practices, because each country is unique. Each country has its own set of risks that it's facing, and each country has its own instruments, whether those instruments be a well-trained professional security force or a well-trained set of doctors. If they feel that their greatest risk is an epidemic. So we have sound practices because we have practices that conform to the rules and regulations of that country and the principles of public sector management that really apply for every country in the world. So as you move around that budget process, you are along the way following deadlines, following rules of engagement, and hopefully giving the public a role in terms of the original design and also a process, a role in the evaluation of the whole budget outcome. I'm not going to go over the details of it, but when I speak of the budget, I am talking about, in the first instance, the planning against the microeconomic situation uh, and the actual preparation of the budget for each of the sectors, and a very important part of the budget process is procurement and, ex and budget execution. We then have the reporting, we have oversight, and back to the planning process. Next slide, please. But when we think of monitoring and evaluation, there will be ways of monitoring or controlling the budget expenditure that are embedded in the budget process. And with information technology, we are able to actually assure that 
the budget is executed according to a set of, of, of controls that are embedded in the actual technology, the software that you have. However, um, having technology doesn't solve the problems. Um, there will always be additional challenges that come with the technology in that you have to have skilled personnel who can actually be sure that it's being used in the way that it should be, that can verify and check that the payments are going where they are meant to be sent. So we have the internal controls, we have reports, some of which will be generated automatically. Some of the reports will come about as a result of the audit process, and you discussed that uh, this morning with General Mwalongo, who is himself the, the head of auditing for the Air Force in Zambia. But there are also outside organizations that monitor budgets in the world, not just in Africa. The International Budget Pro uh, Partnership is global, and it gives a grade for every country that is a member of this group. So for more than 100 countries, you can go and see the report that was just published about a month ago and see whether your country has improved, or whether your neighbors have improved in the way that they are uh, managing their budgets. One thing that's very important for us to keep in mind is, as Dr. Gary mentioned, his, his organization uh, that keeps track of military expenditures. If you look at the data from the Stockholm Institute, um, International Peace Institute, CIPRI, you will see that there has been inc an increase of military expenditures in Africa. In fact, military expenditures of 51 billion in 2023 were more than 22 percent higher than in 2022. Unfortunately, we are all aware of the fact that insecurity is much higher than it was five years ago. And that is why the expenditures have increased. But simply spending more money doesn't give you peace. Money must be spent in a way that supports the overall well-being that manages the unique risks of each country. And there are some countries, and I think we can send you the, the, um, a paper that was done about Cote d'Ivoire, where to face insecurity of the North in Cote d'Ivoire, they decided that they had to do two things that would reinforce each other. They had to have economic and social development, and they had to have better security forces, a better presence of the security, a better trained security force, and better civil military relations, which in the case of Cote d'Ivoire meant that people told them they had to eliminate these roadblocks that were all throughout the country, where unfortunately, in some cases, the police or military who were at the roadblocks were extorting money from the people. And instead, they, they, they found out that they needed to do that because they started to have committees where the military and civilians would talk to each other. So um, you will choose not only what sector you spend it in, but how you spend it, 
sometimes the sector sectors must be spent together to support each other, to reinforce each other, to really come to the outcome of having peace, security, and development. Thank you.